So, guten Morgen again in Austrian. There's one Austrian here, Professor Kolm, who is the custodian of uh, Hayek in Vienna, the chief of the Hayek uh, Institute. Uh, <clears throat> pleased that you are here after an ele a lavish dinner yesterday, I understand. Um, <clears throat> My thanks go to Prof Professors uh, Fernandez and uh, Professor Coventon, who have been very encouraging uh, to me to come here after some time in Argentina again. I have been in Argentina quite often, I must say, always in momentous economic times. End of the 60s uh, at uh, uh, the inflation crisis and the stabilization of uh, the Argentinian economy under Krieger Vazena, the finance minister at the time. And it was the first devaluation of a national currency under the Bretton Woods system. We had ne to negotiate at that time, quarreling with the IMF, big fight between the World Bank and the IMF um, <clears throat> at the time. And the second time, just before uh, the Malvinas War and immediately after the Malvinas uh, War, which was a very interesting time, the Junta at the time uh, keeping the exchange rate very stable um, until it was untenably overvalued. and. Uh, uh, 1,300 uh, uh, pesos uh, against the U.S. dollar, and then uh, <coughs> unimaginably, of course, after three weeks, they let it go. They gave it free, and it shot up 10 times. You can imagine uh, what the stabilization program at that time immediately meant. It was against any, any uh, economic rationale we had sort of uh, uh, designed a, graduate, a gradual uh, kind of adjustment. Anyway, uh, that's Argentina, but there were good times as well. The National Bank always treated me exceptionally nicely, I must say. <clears throat> um, I am impressed by the conference in a way. Uh, uh, what is included in the so-called Austrian school, I mean, we in Austria would be much more stingy and uh, limited, as Professor Kolm uh, would uh, admit as well. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I sometimes wondered uh, who figured among the Austrians uh, here uh, in the presentations. I'm also uh, very impressed by the uh, rich interpretation and also the reinterpretation of uh, Austrian thought at the time. So, uh, uh, I think this is uh, a very competent kind of uh, conference in terms both of economic theory and application in terms of policy as well as far as the Austrians are concerned and the connections between modern uh, economics and uh, the classical Aust Austrian school. Uh, <clears throat> uh, now, talking about Schumpeter is a mission impossible almost in 15-20 minutes, but um, <clears throat> Let me pinpoint uh, uh, my topic, uh, <clears throat> which is neither a lesson in, uh, in uh, uh, Latin nor a lesson in German, uh, but I just wanted to show you something which you rarely probably have seen. Uh, <clears throat> it's a complex man, and uh, his profile is really very heterogeneous. Uh, first-rate researcher and scientist, but also a man of life, I would say. In Vienna, they said that he was, he was quite a womanizer. And in any case, uh, you might know, or some of you might know, uh, <clears throat> he had three self-proclaimed ambitions in life. First, uh, to be the best lover of Vienna. Secondly, to be the best horseback rider of Austria, which was at that time the monarchy, and he wouldn't have had a chance against our uh, <clears throat> empress because of first-rate horseback rider herself. Um, and the third ambition was to be the best economist of the world. Now, uh, the first one 
It is just an anecdote. He wanted to prove, apparently, at some point in his wild years in Vienna, uh, by uh, traveling in an open carriage with the two most famous prostitutes of Vienna, uh, over the boulevard, which we, which we call the Ringstrasse, and uh, unavoidably passing also uh, uh, the university. And you can imagine what it meant for a very, very conservative faculty uh, having experienced that. It's part of the story, possibly, that he never became professor in Vienna. Um, <clears throat> but for the third point, uh, Schumpeter was, uh, at the end of his uh, time in Harvard, uh, <clears throat> uh, the first non-American uh, president of the American uh, uh, Economic Association in 48. His presidential address, uh, science and uh, ideology, still is a piece worth uh, to be read. And uh, at the same time, almost, he was the first president elected for the newly founded, at that time, International uh, <coughs> Society uh, of Development. Uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> he was about to take on the presidency in Paris uh, in 1950, but he died before. He died in January 1950 in Harvard. That's uh, for his background, but there's a short bio as well, a facetious one in Harvard. Uh, they say, well, he was born in Austria, very early turned to academia. Um, <clears throat> then, this was after the Second World War, went into politics, was fired as a finance minister. He only was seven months finance minister. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> then turned into banking and went broke. Went back into academia and finally wound up in Harvard and turned left. That's uh, the short bio uh, still maintained in Harvard. Um, and as it's really a lasting legacy, and I'll pinpoint one of possibly the most lasting uh, legacy, and uh, it's a legacy, as it seems, never ending. <clears throat> a legacy, for instance, or can be witnessed by the a comprehensive biography of McCraw, the historian of the Harvard Business School, uh, prophet uh, of innovation, some of you might uh, uh, know it, and also, uh, among other uh, aspects, uh, the weekly uh, <coughs> editorial page uh, in The Economist, uh, which is called uh, Schumpeter, dealing with, uh, let's say, topics related in some way, or not so much uh, to Schumpeter. Now let's turn to the message and the content of his uh, uh, theory. Um, <clears throat> I would put it in the context of four books. The first one, not translated in neither uh, language, neither Spanish, nor uh, as far as I know, nor in English, is his visa, and that's his postdoctoral thesis at the University of Vienna, where he al already turns against the Austrians. So the Austrians would be very hesitant, uh, let's say, to, con to consider him a true Austrian school representative, and possibly he even wanted, didn't want uh, to be one. Um, so the Wesen and the Hauptinhalt der theoretischen Nationalökonomie on the nature and the principal concepts of theoretical economics. That was his postdoctoral thesis. The second one is uh, what you have seen here, the title page of uh, the 1912 book about the theory of economic uh, development. You probably know that. Yeah, that's probably familiar to you. Uh, but I go back and you see a difference. There's no subtitle in the first issue. Uh, um, there is hypothesis non fingo, this motto. He put uh, ahead and uh, simply saying, I didn't invent the hypothesis. You just, as he mentions in the foreword, you just have to look around. The world is like that. The world in practice looks like that. So let's say a market-based economy is 
in itself and in reality an entrepreneurial economy uh, <coughs> or an entrepreneurially driven economy. The third uh, book is, of course, the bus his business cycle, his monumental business cycles. They came out in Harvard, 1939, uh, <coughs> and I would call it, it's the empirical part to the theory, the empirical part to the theory, very difficult to read, abhorred by some uh, of the economists, uh, and uh, indeed very complex, possibly overdone in terms of the interrelationships of business cycles. Uh, <clears throat> and then, very popular and widely known, I guess, it's the capital socialism and democracy, a very provocative uh, book. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, on, on, and the, I would say a kind of pessimistic sequel to his theory of economic development uh, coming out of a time of uh, the Second World War when the uh, <coughs> industrial military complexes took over, let's say, economic life, as uh, Schumpeter uh, would have uh, called it. Uh, so uh, it has a somewhat pessimistic English, but still it's, it's a defense of capitalism, I would say. Uh, and uh, the first five, five uh, 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 no, <laughs> thank you, but uh, uh, the first sentence of capitalism, as you uh, know, of the chapter of capitalism, uh, will capitalism survive? No, I don't think so. Uh, and uh, uh, the first sentence of the chapter on socialism, that will socialism work? Yes, I think so. But then uh, it came the most devastating, most devastating criticism of the socialist system. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, actually, I maintain the first prediction of the demise of uh, uh, the Soviet Union, of the implosion of the system as such, due sort of to, due to the, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, ineffectiveness of its own nomenclatura. He depicts this in his chapter fantastically. Now let me uh, turn to the content of uh, his, uh, his uh, theory uh, in terms of dialectics, which Rarely is conceived, so it's a systemic kind of approach to economics. In this context, and that's why he was considered a little bit left in Harvard too, uh, <clears throat> against the Austrians, again, sort of, he complimented Marx. He complimented Marx because he, in his words, was the first one uh, to have grasped the dynamics of the economic process. And having grasped it to be interpreted from within the system, and that's exactly Schumpeter's uh, endeavor as well, only he doesn't want uh, 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 to do it for socialism or for any other system, but for capitalism itself. And that's his, uh, let's say, theory of economic development. And uh, I want to make one quote out of capitalism, socialism, and democracy when he refers to Marx. The only major attempt toward the problem of development is the one of Karl Marx. He strives to treat the development of economic life, that's a Schumpeterian term, economic life itself on basis of economic theory. His accumulation his immiserization, his crisis theories follow from pure economic reasoning, aiming at the evolution of economic life as such, and not just its circular flow, uh, to be induced always from the outside, as the neoclassics maintained. So that's a jibe uh, against the Austrian school, you might say, as well. Uh, and if he had not been more than a purveyor of phraseology, he would be dead by now. Mankind is not grateful, that sort of service, and forgets quickly the names of the people who write the librettos for its political operas. That's a typical Schumpeterian phrase. Uh, <clears throat> so let's, let's try to follow the dialectics, Marx versus 
Schumpeter, and I will close with that. Uh, the thesis of Marx, if you may remember, first volume of uh, Capital, that the economic, economic production, or we could say the economic uh, uh, activity as such, is everywhere and under all circumstances a social process. It's social, intertwined, and therefore no markets, no competition. Just to be short, Schumpeter said, well, realistically, we have to live with a market system or market-based system, market-driven uh, system, and uh, let's start from there. That's his thesis. That's his thesis. Um, and uh, the antithesis in Marx, of course, is that we do have a system in capitalism uh, which uh, has an, an intrinsic antagonism, um, and that's the private ownership, particularly of the means of production. And that drives the system uh, uh, <clears throat> out of its own, not through exogenous forces, but uh, it drives the system from within. And Schumpeter says, well, we also do have something in capitalism which drives the system uh, from within. And the antithesis of the market system is who guesses? The entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is the antithesis, the dialectic driving point uh, in capitalism because no uh, entrepreneur in his right mind wants to have competition. He always wants to trick markets. He wants to escape uh, competition and, if possible, be a mono mo monopolist or at least create for some time, in Schumpeterian terms, a niche where he can uh, sort of exert his entrepreneurial innovation. Let's say, so the innovation, uh, innovative drive uh, of uh, uh, the entrepreneurially based uh, system is, in fact, uh, uh, the dialectics in the market system itself. So that's the antagonism. And I would say that's uh, Schumpeter's bold. Uh, early insight, uh, and that's again not entirely Austrian, of course. Uh, uh, we know it from Cantillon up to it was mentioned here several times. We we, we know it from uh, uh, Bavak uh, as well, but has a completely different connotation. And uh, now the synthesis it's a little bit more tricky. Schumpeter doesn't believe in equilibrium, of course. By itself, there is no equilibrium. There's, there's an equilibrium point, possibly, but that doesn't last. Now, in Marx, the synthesis is what? It's a systems change. The synthesis going from, in terms of historical materialism, going from uh, capitalism to, to uh, uh, socialism. Socialism is the synthesis after having overcome the classes, as you might say, having overcome the private ownership of the means of production. Um, now Schumpeter doesn't need a systems change. Similar to uh, uh, <coughs> Bavak, he's also said capitalism can explain his own dynamics, uh, his own dialectics very well from within. So uh, uh, I think his, his view of uh, a synthesis in, in capitalist terms, in market-based terms, is an optimistic one too. And that's theory of economic development. It's based on entrepreneurial initiative, bringing the system as such uh, to a higher level of welfare. That's the synthesis. But the system cannot and does not rest there. There is no equilibrium. There's possibly a short equilibrium point, but as soon as the entrepreneurs um, think they could rest on that uh, level, then uh, they are lost. Well, and he's very brutal in that if an entrepreneur becomes a rentier after he has been for a while successful and uh, becomes a rentier after the system has outcompeted himself again, uh, then he ceases to be an entrepreneur in Schumpeterian terms. That's sort of the sh in very short words, uh, let's say. Uh, the intrinsic systemic view and dialectics of 
uh, Schumpeter versus uh, uh, Karl Marx. And uh, at the end of his uh, foreword to uh, the Theorie der Wirtschaftlichen Entwicklung, he remarks, the first uh, uh, edition, uh, he hopes that uh, his thoughts will be overtaken and obsolete very soon. Today we can say, after 114 years, they have not become obsolete and they are still part of a legacy where the Austrian school can be proud of to begin with and where there's still much to do and much is going on uh, in the world uh, after having detected over the last three decades or so entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial activity anew in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.